Now there's no doubt that blogging can make you quite a bit of money. However, this takes quite a bit of effort because it's not just about blogging. You need to have a good topic, you need to be able to drive an audience, and you need to make some kind of sales. Now this can come in a variety of ways because there are so many th different things you can do to monetize a blog. But before you decide to start paying for hosting, there's a few things you need to consider before picking a niche. Because once you start a blog, it's really difficult to change after you start producing content. And I'm Michael with Writer Sanctuary, and today I'm going to talk about 8 things you need to consider before picking a blogging niche. Before we get started, if you would like to learn more about blogging and freelance writing in general, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. I try to produce videos as often as I can, time permitting. And if you have any questions or comments that you would like to ask, you can leave them in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on social media. I pay fairly close attention to uh, Twitter and Facebook, so that's a good way to get a hold of me. Or you can use the contact form on writersanctuary.com. That's because the emails come directly to me and I respond to every one of them. Is the blogging niche important? It depends on your target audience and what you're trying to accomplish. Now, if you want to make money from your blog, then yes, a niche is going to be valuable. For example, if you were to go to searchengineland.com, I highly doubt you'd find jerk chicken recipes. That's because searchengineland.com is focused more on search engine material related to content and search engine optimization. They are a domain authority, and that's what you're trying to accomplish with your blog if you want to make money. Now, blogging niche focuses your audience to a specific thing. Like say if you want to run a running website, your target audience would be those who enjoy running. And being able to monetize that would be to advertise things that are related to running, selling shoes, maybe fitness app apparel. But because people are more interested in your running content, they're more likely to buy the stuff related to their favorite hobby. That's why niche websites are important. Now does this mean that a personal blog can be less successful than a focused niche? That depends on your purpose and your target audience. A personal blog is usually scattered all over the place, so it's more difficult to find a specific group of people that are willing to spend money on your website. This will affect the effectiveness of things like affiliate links and uh, donations or even personal sales that you might have through dropshipping. Now, a personal blog that doesn't have a really focused niche can still be successful, it's just far more difficult. So probably the first thing I want to bring up that you should consider is using Google Trends when looking for a blogging niche. Now Google Trends will scan through the entire database and find what is the most, well, trending content available on the internet. It goes back up to five years and it gives you a pretty good idea of what people are looking for. So let's say we want to look up Fortnite. In the past 12 months it's gone from a fairly high search rating and it's been slowly dropping ever since. It peaked here and then it's estimated that it's going to drop again. Now the past 12 months really doesn't give you an idea of how effective a trend is. Because with a blogging niche, you don't want to focus merely on what's trending. Anything can trend. Anything like, for example, anything that hits the news right now that is very popular is going to cause a spike. So you want to go beyond 12 months. So what you do is you drop this down and we're going to select the past five years. Now I know Fortnite hasn't been around that long, but it does serve a purpose to show you what I mean. So you can see that it spiked in 2018 on March 11th but it has been slowly dropping over time. Does this mean Fortnite's a bad topic to cover? Not necessarily, but the chances of you getting traffic from it decrease over time. Let's say we want to try green energy. Over the past five years, it's been pretty stable, so this would be a fairly decent blog niche to focus on. That's because there is still interest grow uh, going, and it's about even all the way across the board. And given the state of current events, it might be a good idea to jump on green energy right now anyway. It looks like it might wind up spiking depending on what happens in the next 2020 elections. Now one of the good things about Google Trends is that you can also search by country. So you don't have to focus merely on the United States. You have tons of different places you can go ahead and select. So if you're focusing your blog on a specific region, like say if you're in Sweden, all you'd have to do is just click that and it would show you the interest over time of a specific topic. As you can see in Sweden, green energy is growing quite a bit. And you can also choose different categories to focus on if you want to specific narrow it down even more. So like people in society that related to green energy or pets and animals, real estate, stuff like that. And you can also change the web search to go from image search, news, Google shopping, and even YouTube. So if you were to decide on make some green energy YouTube videos at a later date, you can just click that. And you can see the interest over time kind of spikes, but it's 
kind of getting a little bit of life over time. Not a lot. But that's in Sweden. So if we want to go back to the United States, you see that the interest over time was biking pretty good and then kind of just pittered out. But now it's growing again. Like I said, with the upcoming elections, it's probably going to go up even more. And we can turn this back down to one year, the past one year. And we see that it was kind of really low at the very beginning and now it's starting to spike again. That's in YouTube. So if we want to go back to blogging, we can just hit web search and see that it's been pretty even all the way across. So when deciding on a blogging niche, you want to do something that's over the long term. You don't want to stick to something that just spikes in the last seven days. This is because anything, like I said before, can cause it to spike. So like if there was uh, something big in the news that was nationwide, that would cause a spike in the search engine. That doesn't mean it would be a necessarily good thing to blog about simply because it doesn't have staying power. In the long term is something that you're looking for in a blog, especially if you're trying to supplement your income and quit your full-time job. So there's all kinds of ways that you can use Google Trends. You can even focus it down to specific states that you live in. Then you can compare one niche against the other and see which one is more popular over time. So that's a good way to find out if something that you're interested in has staying power. Now the second thing I want to bring up to consider when picking a blogging niche is your target audience. This is kind of related to Google Trends. Now knowing what your target audience wants to read will help you create content and engage them and get them to buy more stuff or to spend more time on your website or whatever you need them to do in order for the blog to be successful. So if you're deciding to blog about running supplies, you definitely don't want to put any chicken recipes on your website. That creates confusion and could cause people to stop coming. And it will also decrease your domain authority according to Google. And the higher your domain authority ranking is, the more likely your content will be in front of more people. So it's always good to keep an eye on what your audience wants to watch, read, absorb. You can find this kind of information once you start blogging because the amount of time that people spend on a page and how many visits a certain content gets, those are good indicators to tell you what content is the best performing on your website. And if something doesn't really do all that well, you can refocus your energy and try to do something else, as long as you're sticking to the same niche. Now the third thing you should consider before picking a blogging niche is the amount of competition. Now, a lot of people don't put that much effort into focusing on the competition, but in reality, it's definitely going to affect the success of your website. If you decide to jump into a niche that has a ton of blogs available already, then you have to do something special in order to stand out. And it means that it's going to take far more effort to break into Google search results and appear on the top of the pages. Now something you can do is take to Google and do a basic keyword research. So let's say we wanted to do, let's say Gamify Fitness. Now according to Google, there's about 463,000 results for Gamify Fitness, but it has a fairly low search volume, which doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be a key thing to get into. So I can scroll down and look at some of the other ones. So you have the superhero workout app and there's all kinds of things that are related to gamifying fitness. But not all of these are going to be your direct competitors. For one thing, Soft Tonic isn't focused merely on gamifying fitness. It's just showing you some of the best apps for Android. Now Soft Tonic is just a website specifically for downloading and installing apps and programs for whatever you want to find. At one point you can find drivers on Soft Tonic. That was back in the day. So you can go through and check out some of the other things that people are focusing on, like Healthline. Just keep in mind that the popularity of the blog is definitely going to affect whether your site is successful or not. Because you can focus on a niche that's not really all that known and you can become a domain authority on that specific key phrase. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to come driving in a lot of traffic. You still have to figure out a way to beat the competition. Now the fourth thing you need to consider before picking a blogging niche is how you're going to monetize the website. I can speak from experience that Google AdSense and just focusing purely on that as income is kind of ridiculous. That's because Google AdSense doesn't really pay all that well. In fact, Writer Sanctuary only makes maybe a little over two one thousandths of a cent for every visitor that comes to the website. That's on average. And when it comes to AdSense, different topics are worth more. For example, health and fitness does far better in AdSense than a gaming website does. This is because more companies are throwing money at health and fitness as opposed to gaming. So if you're looking at purely Google AdSense, you need to figure out which is going to be the more profitable for you. Because different industries will buy ads at a different rate and charge more. So if we were to go back to our Google example and just use fitness, we can see in related keywords that Fitness Blender has a $2.54 cost per click. 
That's based on averages of companies who bid on that keyword for AdSense and AdWords. So if you wanted to create a blog and focus something on Fitness Blender and then had ads from AdSense appear on that site, you'd actually make pretty good money if you get some clicks. The problem is, is that maybe less than 2% of the people who visit your site are going to click on one of those ads. Still, it does give you an idea of how much things are worth, so the higher the cost per click is, the more money you'll make on AdSense. But that doesn't mean you'll necessarily make bank. Since you really don't have control over what appears on your website from Google, you're kind of at their mercy on what kind of ads are shown. Now it can be contextual ads, which would be the best because that's based on the content of your blog, but more often than not, it's based on personal experience. So the per people who are visiting your website, the ads that are shown to them is based on Google search results. But then, like I said before, there's a ton of different ways you can monetize a blog. You can sell your own products, you can advertise, uh, like I have Buy Me Coffee, buymeacoffee.com on my website, kind of a donation thing. There's Patreon. You get popular enough, you can sell ad space directly to local companies or even people on, in, on the internet. You can host webinars, host your own educational videos. Now, there's all kinds of ways you can monetize your blog, it just depends on how much effort you want to put into it. And at that rate, it all boils down to traffic. What's going to bring you the most people to your site? Which then relates back to click picking a blogging niche. Now the fifth thing you should consider before picking a blogging niche is to think about doing one that's based on your own passions and hobbies. This is because when you're writing about something that you're passionate about or something that you really enjoy doing, you're more likely to continue writing. It seems less like a chore, more like a fun thing to do. It's like YouTube videos. You see a lot of people that'll stream Fortnite and do Fortnite videos, and that's because that's something that they love doing, and it works really well for them. Some of these people can get subscribers like crazy, and it's less likely to make that person feel like it's a chore to make those videos. The same thing can be said about blogging. Once you get up in the morning and you start dreading writing a blog post, you're in the wrong niche. Because if you're not enjoying your work, it's definitely going to be reflected in what you write. A lot of humans, when they start writing, you can tell what kind of mood they're in based simply on the word usage that they have in the blog post. So if you pick something that you really enjoy doing or that you have a high interest in learning more of, then you're more likely to keep writing and it's going to be more engaging. Because if you're excited about the product or the service or whatever you're writing about, people who are reading your content are going to start getting excited as well. So if you can get someone stoked up in your blog about something that you love, then you're more likely to keep that audience coming back for more. Now the sixth thing you should consider before picking a niche is that it takes more than SEO best practices to be successful. Now you can do all the best search engine optimization things that are out on the internet and do everything everybody tells you to do and you can still fail. Mostly this is because of the type of content you create. Like I said in a previous video, if someone's not looking for it, they're not going to read it. So if you're blogging about something that's really unknown and off topic and just out there, no one's really searching for it anyway, so they're not really going to read it. Search engine optimization says nothing about the type of content you create. It's all about you as the writer and what topic you're trying to cover and the message you're trying to convey. This also includes your ability to write, grammar, spelling, stuff like that. Luckily there's all kinds of ways to learn how to write and I cover a lot of those in my videos. Just keep in mind that it takes a lot more than just keywords, meta descriptions, and image tags to create a successful blog. The seventh thing you should consider is don't focus your niche down too much. Case in point, take my YouTube channel. If you put in text broker in YouTube, a lot of my videos are going to show up. That's because I created myself as an expert on this topic. Unfortunately, I wanted to cover more freelance writing and blogging type stuff, but it's the text broker material that gets the most attention because, well, I haven't created enough content for WordPress and freelance writing. So I focused my niche a little bit much on the YouTube channel and now I'm pretty much well known for text broker. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit more and start going into the blogging and freelance writing stuff. But it's going to take a little bit of time because, well, that's what I'm an expert in. Same with a blog. Writer Sanctuary's blog gets far more traffic on the text broker articles than anything else because I niched down way too far. Unfortunately, text broker as a search term isn't nearly as popular as some of the other ones that I want to focus on. So if you focus too much on one topic, you could lose out on some opportunities. For example, a Fortnite specific blog is only going to be able to draw in that audience. But if you focus more on video games, then you can cover all kinds of different things and get people coming in for video games in general, and they could explore the content and see what other games you cover. However, a Fortnite-focused blog would probably have more of a good chance to sell Fortnite-specific material, like merchandising. But if you focus down way too much, then you're missing out on an audience. 
Take SearchEngineLand.com again as an example. When you want to learn SEO techniques, you go to Search Engine Land. But they also cover different things such as new Google algorithm updates, uh, different ways to write content. They still focus on SEO, but they still focus on a few other subtopics. So as long as the content is still in the same ballpark as your original, it should be okay. Just keep in mind that there is such a thing as narrowing it down too far. And the eighth thing you should consider, and probably one of the most important, is always make sure that you're adding your own personality and style to the content. Adding your own personality would set you apart from the competition. People will start reading your content or watching your videos simply because of who you are. Some authors are just simply more engaging than others. Like Neil Patel. I love his stuff. He does. He gives all kinds of good information on how to create websites and stuff. I just can't stand reading his blogs. As a result, I don't go to his site very often. I'd rather go to Backlinko. See, it's his personality and the way he writes is what veered me away from his blog. But that's okay because I'm not his target audience. His target audience wants to read that stuff and that's what's important. When you add your own personality and style, you make a difference and you separate yourself from the competition. So in the end of when you're building a blog, it all comes down to your target audience. Your target audience, the way you monetize and how you engage that audience is going to dictate whether your blog is successful or not. Because you're really not making content for yourself, you're making it for them. Just remember that when you're high energy, there's a good chance they will be as well. So be inspiring and show off your personality and be the best as you can at whatever niche you decide to choose. So what kind of topics would you like to cover in a blog? Leave it in the comment section down below. Personally, I have a blog on gamifying fitness, video games in general, and then Writer Sanctuary. My interests are all over the map, and I'm about ready to add a couple more simply because I like to write. And at the three websites that I do have, the health and fitness one usually generates the more money when it comes down to AdSense. Problem is that I have to fight the Google algorithm changes and try to bring the site back up to where it was, which is another pain in the ass to try to figure out how to master Google's changes when they do an algorithm update. Because a website that was getting two to three hundred visits a day can be dropped down to thirty or forty overnight. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to learn more about freelance writing, blogging, text broker, or any of the other topics that I cover, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you tomorrow.